It's a good question, actually, because I think uh, I find that obviously the offshore feels that Australia is disadvantaged because of the commodity situation and what's happening with China. I think that's reasonably well known. Um, the currency has also done a lot of the hard work for Australia. And then when I'm in Australia, you know, in Australia, people are beating themselves up quite a lot about how bad things are supposedly here. Um, I, would, I would just say it's just not that bad, quite frankly. Um, the politics is okay. Uh, the rule of law is still very good. Um, and the currency, because we have this free-floating currency, is taking a lot of the shock absorbers for you. So the Australian economy, I think, is, 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 is going to be fine. Uh, and it's hard to see the housing market collapsing when, when all the house prices just got 40% cheaper for, for your average Chinese or offshore investor. Um, but on the corporate side, investing side, I mean, obviously all of this innovation that we're talking about and this, the network effects that come with digital disruption uh, mean that, that Australian companies need to innovate more, quite frankly. They can be disrupted much easier than they could have been before. The distance used to work in their favour for the banks and for others, but now you can set up an online bank. Uh, an online bank can start up quite easily and start undercutting the Australian banks. The Australian branch network's not going to be as helpful for them. And so, so I suppose just from the outside in, we'd love to see more innovative Australian companies doing well uh, because, because just purely being the big supermarket or the big bank in Australia is probably not going to be enough in, in the long run as, as, as disruption accelerates.